Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of our soldering tutorial series, and this is kind of a special episode. I've actually partnered up with uh, one of my suppliers, HMC Electronics, for a few videos just to kind of demo some products and some soldering tips and techniques. They are actually a supplier of mine and uh, kind of ironically they found my YouTube channel and uh, emailed me with a suggestion of uh, kind of partnering up and I said, hey, why not go ahead and send me one of those Hako FX AAADs because I've always wanted to do a review and a uh, demo with one and um, they said sure and I also asked them if I could do a giveaway with this unit which is something I've always wanted to do as a kind of a thank you to my viewers and just a big thank you and something that I've always wanted to do and they went ahead and authorized me to go ahead and do that so in the next video we'll do a brief demo of soldering a couple things with this and then if you leave some comments in that and on a uh, post that I make on my blog in my website which I'll leave down there then I'll go ahead and pick a person at random and then give one of these units away I'm also going to give a few other items away to kind of runners up that way that uh, we can have a few uh, people win some stuff so I'll give away a pair of uh, nice edge clippers here um, like this which I have an, uh, a pair that I'll give away and then just some doohickeys and uh, stuff like that anyways if you want to leave some comments in that and then next video uh, you'll be able to have a chance to win this unit and another announcement is HMC has given me a discount code for my viewers so if you enter Sparky's widgets on checkout until the end of August you'll get ten dollars off on any order over a hundred so you basically get free shipping or uh, some free tips and stuff which is pretty cool Let's go ahead and get started with a brief mini review of some of the features I see most missed out in reviews for this. And then we'll go ahead and talk about tip care and maintenance, which I see is a big problem on the internet. A lot of people just don't take proper care of their tips and their soldering irons, and it really just results in poor work. One of the things I highly suggest is that you get good equipment, good tools. Because when you're working on these electronics projects, the last thing you want to do is fight your tools. You want to actually work on the project and not have to uh, shave yaks in an attempt to work around your tools not doing the job that they need to be doing. So instead of buying those cheap $35 uh, fire starter irons, even if they are temperature adjustable, I highly suggest you spend a little bit more money and get a Hako FX888 or 888 D or a Weller WES51. Those are basically industry standards for just cheaper, high quality soldering stations, whether that be in production or just prototyping or general usage. I highly suggest that you get one of these. So let's kind of begin with some of the things that I notice about the Hako. The stand really stands out, not to kind of be a pun there to me, and that's for a couple reasons. Let me introduce my Weller. This is my WX stand, and it's quite a bit heavier than the stand, and overall footprint is a bit bigger. That might be a plus for some, but for me it's kind of a minus, and I'll point those reasons out right now. If you look here, it just gets really dirty in production because where the brass sponge is located and how big the hole is. And to clean this is kind of a pain. You have to unstrap these straps, pull this out, and then kind of clean it out. This part doesn't come off, and as you can see, it can get messy down there. So you have to kind of, you know, get one of your tweezers in there and scrape that out and dump it out. It's kind of a pain in the butt. So that's one thing that I don't like about those. Even though they come with really nice pencils, and it's a real high quality iron, their stand is just kind of meh. The Hako, on the other hand, is very functional and very usable. It gives you the wet sponge access, brass sponge access, and a lip where you can put some silicon um, kind of an edge on there that you can drag your iron off of. The other thing that I really like is the bottom part comes off with a push of the button and the tray is removable. This allows easy access to adjust your brass sponge, plus you can take this out and clean it very easily. So that's just something that's a just really good design and engineering. And it makes soldering a lot better when you can clean your, your workstation and keep everything in top shape. The next thing I'll kind of point out is the, the pencil itself. 
It's not too heavy, it's not too light, so you can hold it very steadily and work on your work quite well. The one thing I don't like about it is the tip to grip distance is kind of long, but the reason why I have a problem with that is just because of my, I'm used to this iron now. I used to use this stuff all the time and then I got used to these. For somebody who's just starting out, this is actually going to be a lot different from the fire starter sticks or other irons because it's actually already shorter than. The grip's very nice and you can hold it from any direction and the, the lead is very soft, very nice um, kind of burn resistant silicon so you won't have any problems with that. It is also fully removable, so you can take about all the innards and if, in case you ever need to repair it, but they're cheap enough that if something goes wrong, you can just buy another one. And unlike the knockoff of the Hakos, like the AUEs, this actually has proper um, spacing and, and conduction between the tip and the ceramic heater core. There's no jiggling around of it and it fits just perfectly on there and that means you're going to have great heat flow from the heater core to the tip. It's very easy to change the tips on these and that's another thing I like. To the station now, it's basically a 70 watt station with 65 watts going to the pencil and the, the rest of the watts goes to power the unit which means it's got plenty of power for general usage, even to some heavier soldering. It also has enough, uh, low enough power that you won't burn up your delicate components. So it's a really good general range. If you need an iron and you're not sure what kind of wattage it is, I highly recommend a 65 watt iron. Whereas the Weller WES51 is only 50 watts, but it gets the job done. So. Um, if you're looking at that type of iron, don't be dissuaded by that. Uh, although the Hakka will give you a little more oomph if you need it. The difference between this and the analog version, of course, is you don't have the dial here. But on the analog version, you don't know if it's on, if you forgot to flip the switch to turn it off, so you don't know if it's on. Dave Jones has a great video that I'll link to that has a hack where you can put an LED in here to let you know it's on. The digital version, of course, when it's on, you'll see the readout so you know it's on. It has a, a, I think of it as an advantage because you can set your temperatures in there and have them preset and scroll through it. And once you have that set up, it's almost just as quick as changing the temperature on here. And if you do a lot of work with uh, leaded or lead free and you switch between them, you definitely want to be able to have that ability to set between your presets. And believe it or not, it's not too hard to set up the options on this with only two buttons. They did it in a fairly intelligent way, so it's not too bad to set up your presets and everything. And we'll do a brief uh, demo of that probably in the next video when I show the actual soldering of this. I wanted to really concentrate more on tip care and everything, but I just wanted to talk briefly about the iron. So, the uh, next thing we'll talk about is what a soldering iron tip is. And I'll kind of put up a detailed picture that I took of this one, and then one of that I found over the internet, and we'll simply talk about what the makeup of the iron is and why you need to take care of it. So if you look in the very center of the picture here at the kind of uh, copper goldish looking section, that's actually copper core. And it's um, the reason why it's copper is it conducts heat very well and it's very easily formed into the shape of the tip they need. But the problem with copper is, is solder kind of wets to it a little too well and it'll build up layers and layers and layers of solder so it won't give you great solder ability. The other problem is, is when copper is hot it's very easily uh, deformed and it also oxidizes extremely quickly. So what they do is they put a very thin cast iron shell around it, which is where the name soldering iron comes from. The iron doesn't flow heat as well as the copper, so that's why they put a very thin layer of it. But what it does do is wet solder very well, meaning it doesn't build up huge amounts of solder on it, and it can clean off almost to that original first um, dipping of solder that they put on it. 
They always pre-treat these with solder from the factory to protect them. And then as you see, there's the shinier part up here, and that's actually chromium plated, and that's on the non-working parts. And the reason why they do that is because the working, the non-working parts won't ever get any solder on them, so they don't ever have a chance to get protected of them, so they protect them with a chromium plating. As you can see, the iron uh, plating is very, very thin around that, and that's why you can get incidences when you drag it across a wet sponge and it'll create micro fissures in the cast iron which then start corroding that the tip from the inside out it'll corrode the iron and it'll also corrode the copper extremely quickly and then you'll eat your tip in, from the inside out so it's very important to avoid using the wet sponge there are times when you need the aggressive cleaning it offers but you don't want to do that all the time that's why I always suggest you use the brass sponge and then when you need to clean the big bulbs off, you use the uh, silicon lip there that they, you can get from them. You can also use the ones on the stem, which they provide you here around these areas as well, and then go into the sponge. The way I take care of my tips is I basically start off, I always keep a blob of solder on this. Whenever I'm not doing anything, there's always a big blob around the working area. So whenever it's sitting in there, it's protected with the lead or the lead-free solder protecting it. I'll pull it off and then I'll clean it and then I'll re-solder on it and then I'll clean it again. And the reason why I do that is I always use rosin core flux. So that flux actually activates with the heat and causes it to clean a bit, and then I clean off the excess stuff. And then I'll put just a little bit of solder, just a dab on there, and then I can go into my board and touch it onto a pad. And if I have a part on there, the, there's usually enough solder on there to flow between the part and the pad. The idea is to heat the part and the pad up at the same time, and then if it's an SMD part, I just hold it with the solder and then pull off quickly. I'm oh, sorry for the camera shot. Then, when I'm finished, I'm going to clean it, apply solder, clean it again, and put a big blob on it, and then I'm done. And then I repeat that step every time I solder. And if I'm soldering for a long period of time, I'll take a break, and then say I'm dragging one side, I'll take a break, clean, apply it, clean, and then start again. So that's all the method that I use every time to take care of my tips. For example, this tip is my original 1.6 millimeter chisel tip for this pencil. And I've had this for, I think, four years now. And I do an extreme amount of soldering, as you can tell from just all the burn and build up on it. I do quite a bit of soldering with my production and everything on there. And it's basically never failed me. The same with these tips. This tip on here is an $18 tip at most places. Incidentally, HMC Electronics has it for $13.80, which is part of the reason why they're one of my suppliers. In terms of other tip care, I highly recommend if you're just taking care of your tips, and even if you're doing leaded solder, I recommend that you store your tip with uh, lead-free. If you're doing lead-free soldering, I highly recommend that you still store your tip with leaded when you're at the end of your working. Some people might say, well, you're going to have contamination. Not really, because once you clean it all the way off with the method I talk about, you're basically getting it down to the original factory tinning on the cast iron um, shell around the, eye, the uh, tip. Then you just go back to your leaded, lead free solder and then at the end of the day you reapply it. Because the, the, the point is, is the lead solder does a much better job at storage and protecting your tip. Plus you can melt it and keep it at a lower temperature. Usually with the uh, lead free you have to run it around 700, 725. On um, my other one I run it at 716 and I actually have this iron set up for 716 and 725. For lead solder, I run about 650, and you can get away with, I think, as low as 550 um, for most things, but I like to run it just a little bit hot because I like to get in and out quickly on my work, so there's not really a chance for me to burn up the or lift the pads. And that's uh, just some general maintenance uh, advice that I see a lot of people make mistakes on. 
Um, in fact, right in the HACO manual here is a section that tells you right there. Caution, do not file the tip in an attempt to remove the black oxide. And that is the reason why that's even on the HACO manual is just people, you know, they just don't think. They think that it's a solid piece and that, oh, it's it's gotten oxidized and I can clean it off. But there's a lot of science that's gone into the, the uh, creation of these tips. And we're at a point now where they're quite expensive to make because they work so well. So it's really important that you take care of your tips and they'll last for years and they'll make your soldering and your projects much easier. I hope this video helped people with tip maintenance and a general overview of the advantages and why I like the Hako iron. And also in the next video we're going to briefly go over some of the tools and then we're going to do a demo and then we're going to give this iron away and a few other things away to some users which I've uh, wanted to do for a very long time. So I hope everybody enjoyed this video and please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and stay tuned to the next video which should be launching in the next few days. Thank you. Bye.